Hello and welcome to this top 16 game from the European Championships. Uh, I'm as always Ben and today we are watching a cat on the right with a Targ Filty versus George on the left with Targ Filty. Who, uh, who didn't guess we'd see some Targ Filty in the cuts after <laughs> the Swiss grounds, right? I'd like to say very, uh, very kindly to uh, Liam from the gaming hall for sending me this because uh, my top 16 game um, well, it didn't happen. <laughs> the opponent didn't turn up, so uh, it's five minutes of um, uh, of, uh, of one player just sitting there, not really doing anything. So uh, we're on to setups, and we have Coldrag on both sides, a, um, a target loyalist on both. Well, one target loyalist with Cat, two with George, a uh, Rose Road for George, and a Plaza of Pride for Cat. So uh, I just like to apologise for a little bit of the delay getting these out. Um, Myself and uh, Rebecca from the Rebecca and Richard from the White Walkers are uh, matching up our reschedule for the cut, and uh, I got a bit ahead of myself, so uh, we're just kind of uh, waiting on um, Rebecca now to catch up, which won't be take won't take too long. And uh, so yeah, because so if you go to the White Walkers channel, you'll probably see another game from the uh, top 16. Maybe that one won't have Targ. I'm not sure. So they're just using their first pots. Oh, George is having a rethink. I was making sure the time started. Oh, and the clapping you may be able to hear is um, Dan and uh, I forgot the chap I was recording's game. But, um, they the five minutes, the round has started five minutes ago. So uh, their opponents have been disqualified, so they made the top eight. So we have oh, we have a long summer feast, I believe that is on on Cat's side, into uh, summer harvest. So a nice hit there by uh, George. Not only does he get 11, 12 gold with um, with the um, Rose Road, he also gets to draw a card every time he loses a challenge. Um, potentially, he could lose eight challenges this round and draw eight cards. Very unlikely, but you know. Yep, it does look like it is definitely a long summer feast. So uh, we now have an uh, equal number of Targ Lawless. Filthy is knelt, and Targ Lawless is knelt. Uh, this looks like Daenerys Targaryen. And it is with a deep. So, not a bad start there. And we have Drogon. Uh, which leaves one gold. Wonder what that could be for. And Cat has five cards in her hand. So we can see we've got two dragons, no slaves in hand, and a Jakaris in hand for George. And we have a milk. And George is just having a think about who to put it on now. It's obviously two very obvious targets. And he's going to go for Daenerys, so. That does take out the dragon is if he doesn't have a dragon in hand, that does take out the potential of a Jakaris into a dragon as a slave play on uh, on Danny. Because obviously you can't put dragon as a slave on a, a character of an attachment. That's an interesting choice there. I think you know you might want to put on Carl, slow him down and then Jakaris try and try and Jakaris Danny. George does have a lot of money this round, so he can pretty much do what he wants. Uh, he plays on Illyrio's estate. So it's Neil that to reduce the next Targaryen card marshaled by one. And George is having a bit of a think. So a lot more pressure at the stage because this is basically, uh, you know, obviously one loss and you're out, single elimination. Does appear he may not have that many characters in hand that are worth playing out. So you can see he's got a dragon. Interesting, look like he had a slaver's bay there, and he didn't play that out. And let's see, uh, what's the name? Uh, Dora? Doria as well? <coughs> oh no, it might be a Daenerys of his own actually. So we have. Uh, I believe that's Viserion played out. Getting slightly better dragon names now. 
having seen so many tower games. Which is the one that gives Danny stealth. He's done so. It looks like he's sitting on a load of gold. So what, he got 12 gold. And he played out a two cost dragon. Uh, Cat's passing, doesn't want to give him a draw. Well, that's, an in that's a really interesting start there from George. So the downside to start to, to do to uh, cat their passing is she can't put any pressure on. She can't put any pressure on here with uh, the double military because obviously uh, she won't give the card draw. So you can't really get that board down. You know, try and win two militaries and then wipe the board with. Um, but so then maybe march next turn. So, so that is an issue. So we have a military coming in from Cold Drago. Cat wants to win this, she would have to double defend and risk getting the Dragon Dakarist. So that's going to go unopposed. <laughs> and uh, very brave to go unopposed with um, so much gold. And the uh, Targa Loyalist is taking his claim. So you have a power challenge coming in from uh, Targ Loyalist. Which goes unopposed. Oh, maybe Cat's trying to bait him in here to Jakaris the Jakaris Dro uh, Viserion if he goes in. The next turn, open up with Fire and Blood to get uh, George down to only one character. That probably wouldn't be a bad play. Military for two because Danny uh, is milked. And that's going to be opposed, okay. I, maybe what I thought. Oh, Dragon is no slave. And so uh, the Targ Lawless is killed. And George pays a gold to get the uh, to get Dragon is no slave back into hand. And. Uh, <laughs> George <laughs> still had a lot of gold left there, so that's a, that's a very interesting turn. He chose not to play out that much, that much. Okay. So yeah, so I'm assuming when see Dragon is no slave now, not Dragon is no Fire and Blood now. Maybe I don't know. I'm a bit confused. Looks like George is also considering Fire and Blood. Then he's going to go for March by the looks of it. That well, probably wouldn't be a bad idea because um, obviously he's cats down to three characters. He would lose a target loyalist and um, she'd probably lose Drogon, you'd imagine. Now the only thing is she does flip into Fire and Blood. Which she has done. Obviously, the Targ, the Targ uh, loyalists die first. Uh, so George is actually going to end up marching on his own dragons as well. So now Cat really can put the pressure on, and that is a Danny in hand. So he chose not to play out a Danny. Okay, and Dragon is marched, and uh, Viserion is marched. So we have two coals, well, one coal off, one coal for George, and the rest of his board's gone. That does, I think, he's drew into Miri as well. Um, 
Toggler should take how many dead? Only two though. Two did two Toglers dead on each side. Yeah, so George's hands looking pretty stacked for considering he didn't pay spend that much money. Maybe he wants to do lots of interactions with uh, Dragon is no slave. But Cat's Cat has only played out a great horn. She's passed. So she's not really improved her board state. This could be an interesting turn. What can George get out to uh, make the most of this? I guess she probably feels fairly safe because she knows his uh, march is gone. So even if Carl dies, she wouldn't be that annoyed. Still checking his maps. So, I should also point out this point, guys. Um, if you go over to the uh, White Book channel, uh, the White Book channel, White Book website, they're starting to feature a lot of uh, YouTube channels and try to get all the content together in one place. So you see myself, the White Walkers, uh, no fun stuff, a couple of other channels. Uh, very well worth having a look. Really brings everything together. Um, I found no fun stuff. Really interesting channel. I'm probably going to feature some of his decks on um, streams at some point because he's. Um, He's done some really great stuff on there. Um, so yeah, so definitely worth, uh, definitely worth a butchers. Um, obviously, obviously we're on there. Well, I'm on there, so it's pretty good, I'd say. Uh, so we had Quake for the Shadow and a Slaver's Bay played out. Interesting enough, uh, George didn't use Filthy to get uh, Slaver's Bay out, so uh, cost him one gold. So uh, George here is, sorry, Cat here has done a military of Carl Drago. Um, the, I guess the option here is to Dragon is no slave him and then he can defend with Cull. Hope that Cat can't stand him with uh, um, with Plaza of Pride. And looks like it's going to happen. So spends two to uh, Plaza of Pride. Spends another two to Plaza of Pride, uh, which kills him. Because of. Um, uh, be, uh, because of uh, the Cat's own plot. So I think now we have an intrigue coming in, and that hand. <laughs> if she wins that intrigue, there's no bad cards which can be taken out. Um, you've got what's it, Danny, Edgicarus, uh, Miri, and. Um, uh, Illyrio, so uh, no matter what she <laughs> hits, that's not bad. Illyrio is probably the one you want her to hit out of that. That's pretty stacked. And he's unopposed. And she's also going to fire and blood. To kill Quay for the Shadows. Oh, and that was a power. Okay, it wasn't I who saw she That was intrigue. I do apologise. And cat passes. So, Georgie guessed as the military to try and win the. Uh, yep. Yeah, to get Danny down, just to a do just to get the deep of Danny. 
So now we're in a very interesting part of the game where they're both down to one character. This has been uh, highly aggressive, although George has the better econ base. If this is confiscation, I'll say Cat's probably got the better plays that she can do. Um, looking at the plots there, I think, oh, I think George might. No, okay. He's going to go for. So we're going to get March. March into Time of Plenty. So, uh, Cat chose George to go first. March has her Milk Danny. And Cold Drogo has also marched. So we're now down to no characters on each side. Was the play? I might be tempted to cat see the intrigue last turn, um, just to um, just try and take some more carrots out of hand. So um, I didn't quite see sure. So Jonathan unsullied, and I can't see the other card. Looks like it may be econ. I know it's the S E S and Lirio's estate. So. He's got 7, 8 gold, 9, 10, 11 with fealty, so he can probably just about get two characters out. I think maybe a Miri and the, um, and the Unsullied? I guess neither of them are loyal, are they? So you can't use fealty on either. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, yeah, what's he going to get out of here? That's actually an interesting one. He's he's kind of because he's only really got high high cost characters. It doesn't make this a very easy choice. He thinks it's going to be unsullied and Danny maybe. But he's probably worried about the Valor coming back. Let's see one thing. This whatever, like this might be another target on tar game, but this has been pretty high level play. Both these players clearly know what they're doing, and uh, obviously they they kind of they potentially know the other players' tricks. I think Cat did catch George out there with the um, fire and blood. So yeah, we're gonna go for Danny. One, two, three, four, five, six, and so, uh, so George has spent all his money to put the Unsullied and Danny out, and I think just doing the maths, that's his only real option, unless he wants to put Lyria out rather than Danny, and just um, in you know, in case he was worried about that Valor. So we have a Slaver's Bay put out, uh, which gives one gold again. Filter not used for it. We have a Drogon put out who was March, so he's not dead. And we have a pass. So you'd think potentially the obvious thing here is <laughs> that uh, George has the military, but the risk of that is um, if there is a Jakaris in hand. You can suddenly get Jakaris killed. Plaza of Pride can basically discard any card you want to stand Drogo. Uh, Drogon, sorry. And then Drago does the military back and kills Danny. Uh, there's no gold on George's side, so there's no tricks that can come in. And then, jo then he's down to a whiteboard again. Cat's not really been using that Plaza of Pride, so it'll be interesting to see if that is the kind of play she's thinking of. And George might be better off here just not doing a military challenge. Oh no, the issue is, of course. Um, even if he does the military, he can still stay on the dragon and then um, kill Sir and then uh, Dukaris uh, them as they try to defend. So the intrigue, uh, which takes out um, Dolor. Is it Dolor? So is he going to defend? You almost want to let this go unopposed. 
So yep, yeah, he's going to let it go unopposed and he's going to claim the unsullied. And Dominance goes to Cat because she has one gold. Yeah, I think George is just saying that to his friend, a friend in uh, Greek that yeah, if he defends it against Chikarist, he's in trouble. So I believe it's currently 5-2 to Cat. Uh, we've got a ghost to Harren Hall that looks that into accounting coppers. So George gets the Unsullied back and obviously Cat gets Drogo, uh, Drogo, uh, Drogo back. That's a, you'd take that trade, wouldn't you? More importantly, it turns off. Well, actually, turns doesn't turn off George's Slavers Bay, but it's turn off Cat's Slavers Bay because you just got the fourth kill. I've seen quite a few people putting uh, close calls and uh, Ghost of Harrenhal in there just to try and mess around with the Targ maps on their gold. As they are kind of the meta at the moment. So we're on to George's Marshalling. I believe this is turn four. Serion bring that out with a dupe for basically no gold. George still got four gold left to spend. And you see he's got the Chikaris in hand. Maybe tend to put Rigel out. Get yeah, let Danny stand. I always find that's I always find he's probably the most useful of the dragons. If you win that challenge, getting like getting to take part in two challenges. She's going for the renowned, not the uh, not the stand ability. And putting a bodyguard on Danny. Still has filthy. So Jakaris is still a threat. So we have three gold coming in for Cat. Uh, puts the uh, Tug Loyalist out, so that'll be the last Tug Loyalist. And looks like a four cost unique. Yep. That is uh, Drogo. Uh, Drago with a dupe, who doesn't have stealth at the moment, he's another blood rider, but he is strength 6 when he's attacking, which is not bad at the moment, that's kind of useful. Uh, Cat also has no gold, but does have fealty. Oh dear. This could be about to get messy. So the military coming in from the uh, Unsullied. And it looks like they're going to get Jakarist, which uh, George kind of <laughs> begrudgingly accepted. So Kat's saying they should go defend it, got renowned, but I think she wants to kind of do the double military back. And also the threat of Carl Drogo getting Jakaris by Danny probably would be a bit too high to risk it at that point. And that's the other reason I think I prefer the Standy Dragon, because you go in, do the intrigue, uh, so you, you know, let's say Danny does a power for five stealth past Drogo, uh, Drogon, you could, and then Drogo defends, you could um, Jakaris him, then as a reaction stand Danny to kill him. I think pretty sure that's how the reaction would work because you're still in the challenge. Uh, so that's an unopposed power there from Viserion. So we have a military for five coming in from uh, Drago. Uh, Drago? Six, yeah. So George just makes sure that's five because of Danny or is he actually five? So that's a very important definition at this point. Whether he's Jakaris or not. So the image of casting him is to uh, would be to nil your only military icon. Okay. 
uh, goes unopposed. And the dupe is taken on Viserys. Viserion, sorry. Plaza of Pride to stand him. And then we have another military coming in. So good use there, Plaza of Pride, to get the double military on a character which uh, can't be Jakarist. One card in hand, known how for Cat, though, so her options for next turn are going to get a bit limited. You're probably going to see her playing Counting Coppers, I imagine, try and refill that hand. So the challenge is opposed. I'm going to take the series of claim. Probably because both his dupes are already gone. So, um, yeah, he's less useful right now. So, we've got a power coming in from Drogo. Obviously, I think George is thinking there about standing, about um, Jakara Singh, but then realised that obviously he wouldn't die. So, uh, let's go unopposed. So, I think George is currently on three power, and Cat's up to eight power. So you see right now, Cat is Cat's got the in the sense here. Board states in a far better position, and uh, she's um, and she's really putting the pressure on. Obviously, uh, Jogo is doing serious work with Plaza of Pride, not being able to be Jakarist. So uh, George is considering to Valor at this point. That's probably about the best choice. So we have Valor into Long Winter. So Cat's chosen, chosen to go first. Uh, so the, uh, all the Slaver Spades will now be uh, turned on for sure. Uh, Drago goes up to... Uh, George and goes, yep, George, both the players are a house card. No, oh, it's card a house card, sorry, discarding a power off the house card. It's got your house card, then you can't win. Yes. So Cat's got six gold. And George can do the same after the attempt of taking a, an action. What else has Cat got here? And you got three cards. So we have. Ooh. So we have Argo played out. So now uh, Joe does have stealth. I'm going to pass on two gold. So two claim military and Plaza of Pride. And George's hand is looking pretty expensive again. So he's got two gold, four gold, five gold in total, plus the two juice. He needs to get seven golds worth of characters out. And so he's still got the Jakaris. Uh, looks like that might be a Plaza of Pride in hand as well. Not Plaza of Pride, Plaza of Punishment. But I think he's struggling to get that board presence that he wants. And I say special two claim military coming his way. This is not going to be ideal. So I'm sure he's got. He's basically got seven gold. So he could get the dragon and his own uh, Jogo. Is it Jogo? Whatever. Is it? Whatever the. So, spends four, including filthy, to get uh, to get him out. And I believe he should then have three gold, which could get the uh, three gold, four gold. I've done my math wrong here. Two for that. Two for uh, four, five. No, yeah, and he's got one gold left. So Jakaris is an hour of threat. She can do. She can. Uh, Kat is doing a military stuff in Jogon. Probably assuming here if she wins this, then both military icons are going to die. At which point she is fairly safe.
George is looking like he's in a bit stuck between a rock and a hard place at the moment. So yeah, strength seven because. So he's considering Jakara thing. The issue being, he can still go and do the power afterwards, Stealth and Danny. Oh no, you'll die at the end of the challenge, won't he? Sorry, because uh, he's, he's trying to revert back to three. That might be worth doing, mind not it? So he's going to oppose. And then two claim. Uh, triggers Plaza Price. Ah, so I remember this being a. I, me I remember this coming up. So this was uh, the, there's was, was some misplay here by Cat, unfortunately. So um, George wants to get we'll get him the judge over. So she tries to plaza her pride, uh, two cards in hand, and obviously there's no valid target for the Rose Road to stand because obviously it includes a prank free character. So the the ruling unfortunately is going to be that. Um, so because so the ruling is going to be that the Rose Road is going to go to the discard pile, the prize of pride is wasted, which is actually incorrect. That's an incorrect ruling, unfortunately. Uh, the ruling should have been it's an illegal board state. It has to go back to being a correct board state. So uh, the Rose Road would come back to hand, and the Plaza of Pride would be stood, and then she could then discard the uh, Rigal to um, to stand to stand uh, Drogo, uh, Drogon, who then would have gone and sold him two more power and opposed, putting her on, um, putting her on. I think that'd be nine power at that point. No, I probably lost one back on the unopposed, but yeah, uh, that was unfor uh, yeah, unfortunately that is uh, that was an incorrect call. Um, but you know, it does happen unfortunately. And I say, do sorry about the jump there, the camera. There was a slight. We had a slight uh, loss of uh, images. I don't with the files that came over, so we haven't missed anything really. Um, we just missed the plots, which was. Um, Famine into I can't see. I presume it's counting coppers, and uh, a, the Rigel that we saw earlier was played out, and then Crown of Gold was played out. That can't be counting coppers, in, can it? Oh, maybe it can. Maybe there's enough money from that, and we just get to put where the Crown of Gold's put on Danny. So I do apologise for that. Something with the way the files came over. Um, I did project it twice, but nothing that could be done, unfortunately. Uh, the rest of it works fairly, fairly well. So on to George. Uh, we're currently sitting at seven to two uh, in Cat's favour. Uh, obviously, we had me for that mistake. We'll probably would be seven. Uh, would have been, that'd be nine. It'd be nine to three if it had me for that mistake. So uh, that, that ruling error, but I say it happens. Oh, it was confiscation that was played out, right? So Cat played confiscation that turn. Thank you, George, for moving those plots so we can see what it was. <laughs> and so, yeah, into a famine. So, George can get a military icon out here, uh, a couple of characters. He could be alright. Otherwise, so we have another Unsullied. Two gold left. I don't think, it's, again, it doesn't look like he's got anything in hand he can actually play out. Now, it'd be interesting here if he decides to let Danny die, especially now she's got the crown of gold on her. Uh, um, uh, especially now she's got the crown of gold on her, and um, then comes back and does the two claim military. Because this is going to be strength ridiculous because of how many dead characters there are now. Danny of a crown of gold. Uh, Dave and George pay fire and blood yet, so she she would be dying this. And oh, he's actually going to let her. It's going to let them die. Okay, interesting. And can 
can't stand him with Plaza of Pride. No, we're just going to do the Intrigue instead. With George Takaris. No, we're going to Fire and Blood. Oh, that's a big play. So he can get... Oh, yeah, he gets Drago back. And this is going to be two claim military coming back. This is going to swing the game. I would think at this point, because Cat's got one card in hand. Can't defend that military. Uh, George said that he's also going to have one card in hand, but he'll actually have a board state. Don't think George has paid Fire and Blood, so he would be about to, to lose Danny, I think, as soon as he plays it. So that goes unopposed. Cat's up to eight or nine. I can't quite tell, actually. That must be nine now. Miri's taken his claim, so that's uh, that's quite big. So she is a one-woman racking machine. And on to George's challenges. Oh, she's going to get rid of Beggar King to stand... Stand him? And going to do the power. Kind of figuring she's going to die anyway, so she might as well go and take the, some power claim. So I believe she's now on 11 power. And that military comes in unopposed. And unopposed. So she cats that down to 9 power. George is up to... I believe that's 6? Could be 5. Quite hard to tell those power tokens. No offence, George. If you are watching this. And we have Fire and Blood into, into Valor. So either way, Daniel's dying this turn. And actually, the way that board was going to get wiped. Um, yeah, so I don't, I'm not actually sure that mistake, that rules mistake, is going to make that much of a difference at this point. Because the boards are being wiped anyway, so it kind of depends how this goes now. I mean, Cat would have potentially have two more power, maybe one more power. I'm not sure if it made that big a difference. Can she get a board presence out? I uh, got a. Great hole and a pass. That, yeah, this. I think that is, uh, yeah, this is really going to hurt Cat's chances now. So, assumably, both of them are going to play Counting Coppers next turn. Because there's no way I think Cat is going. Uh, Cat loses a Rose Road to that. I don't think there's any way Cat's going to try and lose a uh, play Ghost of Harrenhal's bring Danny back. So uh, we have a power and unopposed power and unopposed choice intrigue, and da uh, Cat wins Dom. So Cat is currently on nine power, I believe, again, and I just can't tell how much power George has got. Um, uh, I'm going to guess he's on around eight or nine power as well. I think Cat's got. I can't remember if Cat's got counting coppers, but she has. I think she needs to play it at this point. She needs some cards in hand. I think George will be playing counting coppers as well. So we have marched into counting coppers. Okay. So Cat's going to go first. Relying on this top deck. So George has got a nice full hand. George back up six cards. So a nice full hand. Cat's got two characters. She's just going to quickly check her dead pile. I have a bad feeling about at least one of them. So Cat, you'll get six gold. Nils both of those to get out. Um, to get out. Series. Uh, Serion. And George is just checking he's not dead because there is a lot of dead characters at this point. So George is going to be putting some char some characters out. So he's got six, uh, six gold, seven gold, and filthy. More money next to that. I, I have a whole. Oh, he can't put any characters out. Interesting. Can 
that was like a dead pal. When have we got? Go when have we got a cheeky uh, ghost? Uh, so um, House of the Undying in there. So unopposed power. She gets cat two power, which puts her up to twelve. So oh. So uh, George just gets Dom. So that's actually a cast up to 12 power, I believe. So actually that... Oh no, that rules that rules error could actually make a bit of an impact here. If she can get one more power before George can gain a power, then I think it has. And yeah, she could have discarded the other dragon with plans or probably got the unopposed military and that would be game now. So yeah. Ooh. She might still be able to pull it through though. So we have March the Wall into I Can't Tell. <laughs> oh, I'll go to Harren Hall. Okay. Interesting choice there from Cat choosing to let them bring Danny back. And she must be desperate for the characters. Oh, actually, no, she wouldn't. No, Cat would have ended that turn on four, 14 power, not 15 power. So, actually, yeah. It had been tight, but as you know, so thinking about it, I don't think that has cost her just. I need to go back and have a rethink on the maps. And that was two claim, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it would have been. Uh, I think yeah, I think yes, Cat actually should have won the game at this point. Unfortunately, she can't put any more characters out. So, power is defended. Will he Jakaris her? I would imagine there's no reason not to. And yeah, that's him gone. And oppose, so. Looks like George needs two more power to win. Uh, George takes Dom, so it looks like he's one power away. Uh, unfortunately, Cat's already used her fire and blood. Oh, sorry, Valor, sorry. I was turn seven. So I can't recycle that because I was the year of his play here would be to Valor. I think she's running out of options at this point. Anyone really maybe see the long winter and hope you flip into something good? I oh, say draw into something good. And that's indeed the long winter into famine. So both lose a power. Uh, Beggar King to get two gold because he needs more gold at this point. <laughs> So Cat's got four, six gold. If she can't play anything, this is game. Another Slaver's Bay. And, uh, yep, George knows his Slaver's Bay. So Cat's got, yeah, sort of six gold. 
Ooh, interesting include. So we have the, uh, I think this is, is this the Devraki Honor Guard, I want to say they're called, uh, where they are of cost 5, strength 10, and the text box reads minus 1 strength for each card in hand. So it looks like they're strength 7 at the moment. So George needs to be able to put out a character now. He's got a stupid amount of money. Um, so what's he got? He's got two from his plot, two from the Beg King. He's got eight, ten gold, ten gold on a famine turn. This is ridiculous. <laughs> got a Plaza of Pride played out for free. And is that no? He's not playing anyone out by the looks of it. I think it looks like he is passing. Okay. Interesting. So, cats on a quick look for the discard pile. You have to do the military at this point, surely. And then, to, if you can stand them with Plaza Power Challenge. You have four minutes left. Uh, interesting to do the military first. Try and clear the board, then get, then get two unopposed challenges. Assuming there's no fire on blood. And there is a fire on blood in hand. Oh, I've had a challenge for six, sorry, she's got four cards in hand. Oh no, six because of Danny. Yep, yeah, sorry. So that puts her up to 12 power she wins this. So it's unopposed. Uh, so yep, Cat is on to. It looks like she's on to. She's on to 13 power now. Can go back to that turn. <laughs> Some of the first dead pile. The option here, I guess, is where you go. You go Rigo probably for the um, renowned on Danny. Not Rigo, sorry, uh, Dragon for the renowned Danny. Or to go for Rigo to stand Danny. Obviously, the Plaza of Pride is a thing here. Oh, all the stealth. That's another option, actually, isn't it? The unopposed power should win the game, I'd, think, I'd have thought at that point. Because they'll be strength seven on defense, won't they? Fire and Bloods played out. Bring back Rigo. So we have an entry coming in first. So he's up to 13 power. Takes two cards out of hand. Now there's a Slaver's Bay in hand there. Should, um, she, I think she should have stood the honor guard before the entry challenge and that is game so good game there for both of the guys there um, very well played game and that's uh, yeah that that say so that I, I think that decision might have made a slight difference I hate to say it but I'm, I'm not sure I mean both players would probably play differently wouldn't they so you're never 100% sure uh, that would have changed a lot of how people they probably would have played from that point onwards but anyway guys, thank you very much for watching and come back next time for the top 8 uh, where we have uh, Tyrell Reigns versus Targaryen Filthy.
As always, it's been emotional. <laughs>